Hi guys, it's Lila here. Today I will be bringing you guys a sketch video of a Genshin Impact character named Raiden Shogun and I will be showing the full sketch process here today. In the upcoming video, I hope to color her with watercolor, obviously. Uh, Windsor Newton Cotman and Gansai Tombi palette. Other than that, you will notice that I now have a tripod and you can see both my hands and what I am doing without my finger blown up. That is a good change for me and I hope it is for you guys as well. And so let's get into it. Hello guys, uh, right here I'm doing the framing so I understand the space that my character will exist in. So you may ask why am I showing my whole process and no, it's not for commission. It's, um, I honestly just want to help people just starting off with uh, drawing. So, why I want to help other people, it, honestly, it's it's because when I first started off with art, I really didn't receive much help at all. Most of my help came in the form of competition with some of my friends, and some of it was not the healthiest of competition. And so, you don't have to compete with your friends to get better at art. Um, watching how other people do it and getting over yourself is honestly the best part of learning art because there's so much you can learn from other people and I just want to show my whole process and be able to help someone out you know if they're having trouble if they think they need to draw ahead over and over again or if they didn't know that they needed to do that over and over again to get it perfect then now they know so my whole thing with references a lot of people who know me know that i have a really big stigma towards references and recently because of a art block i've had for the past three years i think it's time to get over myself personally and start using them so you'll see uh, i just pop back into frame I used a reference for her hair, her eyes, and her belt. I didn't use it for the shape of the hair, I used it just for the bangs, or the eyes, I used it for the shape of the eyes, not the specific details of them because that's where my style comes in. And so references aren't bad to use, it's when you overuse them and what I used to think is that, oh, if you're using a reference, you're obviously copying from someone, so it's not your own art, and you're therefore a terrible artist, and that's not it at all. It's if you're taking every single piece of that and just redrawing it, and I know that that in and of itself, I know people who trace, I used to, I used to do tracing and then say I didn't do tracing, but MS Paint can say otherwise. Um, tracing itself is not bad starting off either, but you need to at one point not trace anymore. And I guess I, I never really understood that, that some people really do need references. And it's not a terrible thing. And I'm starting to use them for anatomy. And as you can tell, this doesn't really glow anime-esque figure. I was trying my best to uh, try something new and that's why I've begun doing a, a little bit of dynamic character positioning um, just to help myself with that anatomy aspect. I think it's very very useful that I also get over myself with anatomy and I think the worst thing that I could have done with my art was to try to you know you see an anime and you want to replicate it or you do that from memory well that's really bad because memory is sometimes really bad and I didn't take that into account either and I probably should have because years down the line here I am and it's still extremely difficult to draw a hand it's still extremely difficult to draw legs in a dynamic fashion because usually anime is front facing and you don't get that sense of dynamic where a character exists in space it's just not there so you'll see 
um, that I'm blocking in a lot of my details and now during this sketch phase um, what I personally like to do is put in possibilities for what a sketch can be before I line art it. So it, in my thumbnail art you will see that or you saw that I actually did a bunch of different positions with the arms and it looked like she had you know four or five different arms and you just got to play with possibilities there and you're never bad for using a reference for possibilities either. Um, See right here I'm doing ruffles. I actually didn't know about ruffles until this year, but honestly going in and adding detail during the line art, um, detail that you already drew in and it, that detail that you liked from your sketches, you'll see right here when I'm doing the background, I go back and I scrap it all over again. Backgrounds also don't need to be perfect either. <laughs> no one tells you as a beginner artist that uh, you, you're, everyone tells you that it needs to be perfect, all right, and it doesn't. Right here you see me going over and over again doing these stupid six shapes, <laughs> and I couldn't get them right for the life of me. That'll be the only detail in the background, and personally I think that's the only detail needed. Usually backgrounds in this instance, since I'm going to go over this with watercolor, it's just going to be a big blob anyway, and usually if your focal point is a character, your background shouldn't have too much detail in it anyway, because that's not your focal point. You'll see I'm going in here now with the line art, finally, finally going in here with the line art, um, and now I'm erasing part of my sketch. That itself is a step that I like to take too, just to see where my line art is, because sometimes with all the pencil and all the pen you can't really make out what the actual shape is until you kind of reveal it and that's kind of that's the most satisfying part about doing line art is revealing your actual line art from the sketch but tips um recently i've been learning about uh you know velocity of a line uh how thick you make it thick triple c with the braid that's coming up here but I go over stuff multiple times. I'm using a fixed point 01 micron for a lot of this because I absolutely personally, as an artist, I, I botch everything with a uh, brush tip. So I, I tend to stay away from felt brush tips myself. Even if micron is amazing, I don't trust like that. But even if that means going over a line multiple times like I do there, if you mess up, you can always go over it again and make it thicker just to hide it. It's never really a problem. And that's just my tip with line art is you never really mess up until you end up with a big black blob. <laughs> so I go in here and I am figuring out how the clothes the, the specific details of the clothes are laying on my character here. It, not my character, it's Ryan Shogun. But um, you'll see I mess with the robe a little bit at the bottom. And figuring out how clothes lay on your character is another best practice. Because sometimes it can be a little difficult to see the wrinkles. But if you know your anatomy, usually you can get around the wrinkle part and a lot of times you'll just end up over wrinkling it but before you do the line art you can just slowly scrape that off <laughs> and you should be fine you should be perfectly fine at that point um less is more when it comes to line art details with clothing and textiles um i know i say that as i go in there and do lace i'm terrible with lace And then I guess I'm going in here and finishing up the sheath and lining the arm. I do stuff a little bit differently with the arm than I thought I would with my sketch. And that's also okay. You can change your sketch while you're doing it. It's all a process. See, I'm going in here and doing the background. And then I'll do the frame and I'll be done. 
I just wanted to thank you guys for sitting here and listening to my rambling. Um, this is my finished Raiden Shogun uh, sketch line art. In the upcoming videos, I do plan on doing a watercolor finished of her. But I just wanted to thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for that. And I hope I helped.